Many people overdo it when it comes to using supplements. They have the idea that if they don't live a healthy lifestyle themselves, that maybe it'd be all right to use a lot of supplements to protect them. Or maybe they're living a healthy lifestyle and they want to be even better. And so they're apt to use lots of supplements. I remember a coach that came from one of the football professional football teams to see me for a consultation. And I have a big desk, and he literally filled that desk with supplements, and I couldn't believe it. It was so impressive I took a picture of it because I'd never seen anything quite so extreme. And the problem is, is that can get us into trouble because it's not really natural. And when we look at things like beta carotene, uh, there is a dark side to beta carotene that we don't really appreciate. And in the May issue of 2012 of the Journal of Biological Chemistry, what they showed is that not all beta carotene is the same. In fact, some of it, when it is converted into vitamin A, produces an anti-vitamin A. It can actually block the effect at the receptor site of what vitamin A is supposed to do. See, beta carotene is composed of two vitamin A molecules. And there's an enzyme in the body that breaks it into two pieces that makes two nice vitamin A molecules. But if the wrong enzyme is there and it breaks it in the wrong place, one of those molecules may be good, but the other one might turn out to be an anti-vitamin A. It's interesting that we can find amounts of this anti-vitamin A in human blood. In fact, it's, it's the rule rather than the exception. So this is not something that's far-fetched and just theoretical. Uh, and we, we also know that there are high levels of this anti-vitamin A in some of the fleshy colored melons uh, that, that we eat like cantaloupe. And that doesn't mean that it doesn't have some of the good stuff too. It's interesting how the combination is present when we check it in nature. But big doses of, of beta carotene are what we get concerned about. And some of the time, and no one knows why, there's more of the, of the anti-vitamin A than there is in the regular good uh, vitamin A that we need when we're converting beta carotene into vitamin A. And we take large doses, it may explain why years ago a study was done that uh, was prospective on people who were uh, being looked uh, or being checked to see if they would develop lung cancer. And they found that those people uh, who use beta carotene that were smokers uh, actually had a higher risk for developing cancer than those that didn't use beta carotene. And it could be because they actually had a lower level of vitamin A. So that may explain what happened in that setting. We also suspect that in cases where there's high oxidative stress, like where there's a lot of pollution or where you're smoking, that maybe that's what sets the stage for developing more of this anti uh, of vitamin A that blocks the receptor site that is makes it uh, something that we shouldn't be uh, doing. So we have to keep in mind that there are limits to everything and when we get excessive even with things that appear to be really good we may be getting ourselves into trouble and we should avoid uh, trying to overdo things. We should use lifestyle first because lifestyle is always your best medicine to start with.